Hey everyone, Ray Del Vecchio here, and in this video, we're going to discuss the best plugins that you can add to your WordPress website in 2018. Now, as you can see from the WordPress plugins webpage, they mention there's over 53,000 plugins available to you. So, if you have an idea for a specific function that you want to add to your website, usually the first place you want to look is the plugins because chances are there's something out there that you can work with. I chose about a dozen that I think are going to have the widest application so that's what we're going to go through today. And let me search for the first one. We'll get right into it. The first one is called Child Theme Configurator. Now when you initially install WordPress and select a the theme, if you plan on making any customizations to that theme, you want to do so within a child theme that inherits from the parent theme. And the easy way to do this, so you don't have to do it manually, is using this plugin called Child Theme Configurator. And one thing that I want to note for all of these plugins is that when you're looking to install a plugin, generally you want to make sure that it has a lot of active installations and it has you know, a four or five star rating pretty solidly. And you can see that on here. This has over 100,000 active installations and it's got 153 five star reviews and less than 20 reviews of either one to four stars. So you can tell it's a really good plugin and this makes it easy to copy over any template files that you like from the parent theme to the child theme and once you create your child theme that's what you're going to want to build on and make any customizations to. Now I'm not going to go in depth with every one of these plugins because that would be like a two hour <laughs> video but uh, let me move on to the next one which is contact form 7. Now when it comes to contact forms there's a variety of plugins available and I'm fairly certain that contact form 7 is if not the oldest one of the oldest ones that was <laughs> available like six seven years ago and obviously as such it became one of the most popular and you can tell that by the number of reviews and active installations. So you can see that this has over 5 million active installations. And when I first started learning WordPress, which was about you know, seven years ago, this is one of the first plugins that I used. And because I'm so familiar with it, I've never even tested any other contact form plugins. This works really well for creating a simple contact form, or you can even do more elaborate contact forms with checkboxes, drop down menus if you want to do you know, a, a customer quiz and collect the results of that. So I highly recommend this plugin for lead generation or to create another way for your users to get in touch with you. Next up on our list is a page builder plugin and in fact I'm going to highlight two different ones. The first which was actually brought to my attention from my email subscribers is called Elementor. So I because I use a uh, premium paid theme, I haven't really tested a lot of design oriented plugins in a long time. And through my website and email list, I had multiple subscribers ask me if I've ever used this plugin called Elementor. So once I heard from, I think, the third or fourth person to recommend it, I decided that maybe I should check it out. And I ended up doing a full length tutorial on how to build a website with this plugin. So I'll link that in the description below. But in a nutshell, what this plugin does is it gives you a visual way to build your pages and your posts, which is a, a notch above the visual editor within WordPress. And it comes with a bunch of uh, pre-built styles. So let me just click into it, and I think they'll probably have a list of the different items that they support. Let me scroll down here, and yeah, here we go. So they say they have 28 free widgets and counting. So they have ones for headings, images, a text editor, video, a button, an image box, an icon box, uh, image gallery, image carousel, a counter, a progress bar, accordion, tabs, and then uh, you can also embed Google Maps, audio through SoundCloud. So there's a lot of different content areas that have the styling built into it so you don't have to worry about doing that manually or using CSS code. It looks like the top competitor to this one is called Page Builder by Site Origin. So let me search for that. And uh, I don't see it here. Let me just uh, type in Page Builder and I think it might come up. Yeah, there we go. Uh, okay, Site Origin is one word. That's why it didn't show up in the search. But you can see this one actually has a million plus active installations. 
I have not personally tested this, but obviously given the amount of installations and the reviews, this looks like another solid way to build your pages a little more easily than using the WordPress editor. The next plugin that we're going to look at is for SEO. So if you don't know anything about this, that stands for Search Engine Optimization, and this is what helps your website pages get found a little bit more easily in Google. And the top plugin by far for this is called Yoast SEO. You can see here it's got five plus million active installations. And there's a lot of options for this particular plugin. The main thing that you want to consider is that for each page and post on your website, you want to create a unique title that has a lot of keywords specific to that page in the title and the description of the post. And what it's going to do, it's going to show you how your snippet is going to look in Google when somebody searches Google. Some websites that don't have this plugin installed may have the same title for every page of their website. And there's no uniqueness with it, and there's a lot of duplicate content. So this is a good way to counteract that and give your site a better chance to get found by people searching Google. Now, if you want to add e-commerce to your website, I believe that the most popular plugin yeah, I think WooCommerce is the most popular plugin for e-commerce. And this has over 3 million active installations. So if you'd like to add products to your site that you want to sell, I definitely would recommend checking out WooCommerce because it's got super high ratings. You know, I personally don't deal with e-commerce very often, so I I don't have much experience with this plugin. I do have a little bit of experience using Shopify, which I like to describe as WordPress for e-commerce, but it's a completely different uh, platform than WordPress. So if you have more of a blog type website and you just want to add on e-commerce, I would look into this plugin. If you're looking to develop an e-commerce store that is completely driven by e-commerce and doesn't have as much content, then you might want to look into another solution like Shopify. The next plugin that we're going to look at is kind of a marketing plugin although it has a suite of tools so this one is called Sumo and as you can tell the the um, title here is free tools to automate your site growth so this is actually one of my favorite plugins it, this one has over a hundred thousand active installs and they give you I mean maybe 10 to 15 different tools that you can add to your website you can pick and choose some are for email list building and that's what you see here in their banner they have pop-ups to give digital downloads or free offers in exchange for an email address. There's also a scroll box so if somebody's reading your blog, they get down, you know, either 50% or 75% of the way down the blog post, they might get a little slide out box to capture their email address. And they also have social tools. So if you have an image heavy website, there's tools on here to hover over the image and automatically share on either Facebook or Pinterest. There's also share buttons on the side of the page, and you can choose the services on there, you know, Facebook, Twitter, email, SMS. There's also cool tools that show you how people are interacting with your site. So they have heat maps, which shows you where people are clicking on your site. And there's also content analytics, which shows you how far people are scrolling down your site. So overall, I think that this is one of the cooler plugins that you can download if you're looking to grow your email list and understand how people are interacting with your website. We're going to get into more technical plugins now and one that I'm searching for is called iThemes Security. This is a great plugin that's going to give you a bunch of different options to secure your website. So I think they have two-factor authentication. Let me see what else they have here. There's malware, scan scheduling, Password expiration if you want to automatically change your password every so often. There's Google reCAPTCHA, online file comparison if for some reason a hacker was uploading files to your web server without you knowing. One thing that I want to note is iThemes is the company that I choose for my premium themes and plugins. So these they have a theme framework called Builder and that's what I use to develop all my client websites and they have a product called the plugin suite which includes security but there's also like five or ten other plugins that come with the plugin suite such as backup buddy which gives you automatic backups 
So I would highly recommend that you check out iThemes.com and see what they have available. Another cool one is if you're managing websites, they have a, a plugin called Sync, which allows you to manage a bunch of websites from one dashboard. So overall, iThemes is one of my favorite WordPress companies out there, and I've been using them for many, many years. Let's go back to the plugins section, and we're going to search for the next one. And this is really simple SSL. So SSL is the secure protocol, which gives you this HTTPS um, at the beginning and the secure padlock over here in the browser. If you have SSL set up with your host, this plugin makes sure that all your WordPress requests are going to use that same HTTPS protocol so you don't get a mixed content error. Now, if you're on the most basic hosting package, you might not have SSL available, so you can ignore this. If you're building an e-commerce website, you're going to require SSL if you're accepting payments through your website and not using a third-party payment processor. Next up, we have two plugins that are used to cache your website. And <laughs> I'm spelling that C-A-C-H-E, not cash as in money. <laughs> so if you don't know anything about this, basically this makes your website faster because what it does is it saves content from your website to a local browser. So if I was to visit a website today, download all the content on the website, and then go back to that website tomorrow, instead of loading every file again from the web server, it would actually save local copies of either the files or the HTML itself behind the website so that I don't need to spend the time downloading those files once again from the server. So there's two plugins that do this. The one which is a little bit more complicated is called W3 Total Cache. And this is one where you definitely want to look up how to install this and set it up because it's pretty complicated for the average person. You may also have a guide from your web host. Some web hosts may work better with this plugin versus another plugin. The one that's recommended if you're a little bit more of a beginner is called WP Super Cache. So both of these are really widely used. You can see both of them have over a million active installations. And from what I've heard, WP Super Cache is a little bit easier to set up. Most of my experience is using W3 Total Cache. And this is something that you want to do after you're done developing your website. If you have a plugin like this activated while you're making customizations and editing the design, sometimes you'll get the cached file when you're refreshing instead of downloading the new edits that you're making. And that can be really frustrating if you don't know what's happening. Now, let's say you have a fully developed WordPress website that you want to copy. A great plugin that you can use to do this is called Duplicator. So I'm going to search here. And this is a migration, a WordPress migration plugin. So this basically lets you completely clone a WordPress website from one domain to another. So one way that I've used this is by creating a template that I show to potential clients and then if I land a web design client, I'll use this duplicator plugin to import the framework of a website or of a template. And then I just go in and edit all the company information, you know, their company name, their logo, maybe change the colors up a bit. But it gives you a, a great head start. And you can also use this plugin if you'd like to change hosts. So one of the reasons that I recommend using WordPress over a service like Squarespace or Wix is that it's a lot easier to move your website and you have a lot more control over your website when you're using WordPress and your own hosting. And the last plugin that we're going to talk about today is called User Role Editor. So as you're probably aware of, you have a username and password to log into WordPress to edit your website. And one of the nice things about this is that if you want to either collaborate with somebody on building a website or outsource some of the work, instead of giving them your username and password, you can create a new username and password for them and assign them a certain level of functionality. So maybe you want somebody to be an editor where they can edit posts, but they don't have access to all the administrator sections such as the plugins or the themes. WordPress by default has, I think, four or five different levels of access when you create a new account. But what this plugin does is it lets you customize that. 
So say you want to create a specific level of access for someone that isn't built into the editor role. Well, you can do that easily using this user role editor plugin. So that's all I got for this video. As I mentioned at the beginning, you know, there's over 50,000 plugins that you could potentially install. So if you'd like to browse yourself or search, I highly recommend you do that. I would definitely check out the popular plugins. From this WordPress plugins page, you can see, and I think these are organized by the amount of active installations. So I would go through these and take a look at some other plugins. I mean, there's plenty of plugins here that are that you might want to include. Like for instance, this one I've used before, limit login attempts. So you can pretty much block somebody out if they try and log in four or five times and they don't have the right password. So that's an easy way to counteract a brute force attack, which I think may also be included within the iTheme security plugin that we mentioned before. But plugins are great because you can find either really specific plugins to do one thing, or you can find companies that build plugins that do a suite of services, as I mentioned with iTheme security or Sumo. Now, if you have a specific plugin that you love using, by all means, mention it in the comments because I love finding new plugins and seeing what else is out there. The more you test, the more you're going to learn about WordPress and how everything fits together, which is especially important if you're looking to develop client websites. You want to become comfortable with a lot of different plugins and you might get a weird request from a client and think that you need to do some type of manual coding or manual work to implement it and lo and behold if you search the plugins you might find something that eliminates you know 90 percent of the work that you need to do if this sounds like you and you'd like to add wordpress website creation or online marketing as a service to offer to businesses head on over to my site which is websiteprofitcourse.com on there i have a one page pdf download called the 15 tools to start your web design business and these are the tools that I use almost every day to build and manage client websites and if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more WordPress tutorials and videos on the business side of web design thanks everyone for watching I'll see you on the next video